In early May, 200 service members from all five branches of the military converged on Colorado Springs, Colorado to participate in seven challenging events. The inaugural Warrior Games took place at the Olympic Training Center and Air Force Academy, sponsoring Navy, Marine Corps, Coast Guard, Air Force, and Army wounded veterans as they competed for medals, the Commander's Cup, and ultimately bragging rights. But regardless of who won or lost, camaraderie could be found on every court, in every venue, and sitting in every stand. This is the first Wounded Warrior Games. This is the first ever. All the service branches are going to be represented. We're going to compete to see who's the best. Mainly sports going on, basketball, sit volleyball, swimming, a bunch of stuff going on. And this is a way to make rehab fun. Right now we have about 200 uh, individuals here. From what I'm being told is, is this is how they're trying to keep it as real as possible to the way Olympians train. Getting up early in the morning, a lot earlier than what I expected to get up, and not getting even into my room until a lot later than what I was expecting. You're competing in one event, you're spectating in one event, then you're competing, competing, competing. A lot of hard work, but a lot more than you were expecting. You put everybody together as, as, a, as a team, and you come here and try to try to do it as a you know as a group and with people that you've never met before and you know it's all about having that camaraderie if they gave, if they definitely gave a best sportsmanship award it would definitely go to the Navy and a little slash Mr. Congeniality It's incredible to be out here with so many different wounded you know, service members. Um, sometimes you know you, you kind of feel alone. You know, you're not not sure how many people are under similar circumstances, and you don't know how you know if, it, if everybody else struggles sometimes like you. So be out here and, and seeing that everybody adapt and overcome and struggling, but all they want to do is you know put the next foot forward. I know I first got lost my leg. I was really depressed at first. This is giving me something like, hey, look, I can do it, you can do it type thing. I'm normal again type thing. Hearing some of the stories from what the other guys do, you know, makes you appreciate what you have, without a doubt. It takes willpower. It takes, you know, the strength to get out of your bed in the morning and decide, like, I'm not gonna lay here and you know and let let this conquer me, you know. You know, this is my life, you know. What's the point of sitting in bed and waiting? So what does it take? It just takes uh, the power to get out of bed in the morning and, and determine that you are the master of your own destiny. It's a feeling of uh, accomplishment, saying that I actually can do something for myself, and I'm injured. The experience, honestly, it's not a matter. Of, it's not a matter of if you win medals or anything. It's the experience that you get in saying you're doing something that probably at least one to two doctors have told you that you won't be able to do. Just because you're hurt or injured or lost a limb doesn't mean that that's it. You're, you're done. You can still get out there and play ball and have fun and do whatever makes you happy. It's definitely motivating and definitely inspiring. Definitely uh, helps me. You know, just continue what I'm doing, which is you know trying to stay active and healthy. So. This competition is good for you. Makes you stronger, better. And if I don't go home with a medal, I've already won just by being here. Just by me being at these games, 
and not still laying in a hospital bed somewhere means that I've already won in some way, shape, or form. So, you know, we've all won.